I'm here to talk today about uh, a particularly stupid argument uh, for God. Now, you may say that uh, there, there are many arguments uh, for the existence of God, and that they're all pretty stupid, that the field of competition is, is, is pretty intense, but the, the one I'm going to talk about today is, is one of perhaps the more pernicious uh, arguments in favour of there being a God, uh, because it appears, at least superficially, to be based on some sort of science. Um, you may have come across loads of these arguments on the net, and they've been put together in a book by someone called Dr. Hugh Ross, um, uh, there's the fella, um, and uh, he, his book's called The, the Just Right Universe, and uh, he's come up with, uh, last time I looked, it was 26 um, arguments for God, all based on the same basic idea, that there, there are a lot of um, constants in, in physics, a lot of things about the way the universe seems to have been set up, which are um, very, very precise. Uh, for instance, um, neutrons are 1.001 um, times the weight of protons, and if they weren't, uh, then neutrons and protons would decay into each other and, and this would be bad. Um, that if strong uh, nuclear forces were just 0.3% stronger, um, then you wouldn't uh, be able to form any um, of the heavy elements. Um, no, so you'd only be able to form heavy elements, uh, there wouldn't be any hydrogen, uh, whereas if it were weaker by the same amount, then there would only be hydrogen in the universe. And, uh, yeah, gosh, that, that perhaps sounds a little bit impressive at first. Um, and there are loads of them. Oh, if gravity were ever so slightly weaker, then, then all the planets would fly apart, and if it were ever so slightly stronger, they'd all crash into each other. Well, yeah, of course they would. Um, uh, what, what else? Um, uh, electromagnetic uh, forces. Oh, yes, if electromagnetic forces were uh, any uh, stronger, um, then each atom would hold on to its electrons so efficiently you wouldn't get reactions between them and there'd be no chemical reactions. Whereas if they were, if they were weaker, uh, then there wouldn't be strong enough bonds to hold molecules together. And uh, oh, I won't bore you with any more. There are loads of them. Um, and uh, I think that all these arguments can be likened um, unto the migration of birds. In fact, I think I could probably get more than 26 extraordinary coincidences out of uh, the migration of just, just one type of bird. And I've picked a type of bird. It's called the bar-tailed Godwit. There we go. Marvellous. Um, and now I could have picked the sooty shearwater or the arctic tern or any other long migrating species, but I picked the bar-tailed godwit because it's called the bar-tailed godwit. Now, um, these things um, do something of an epic journey. You can see here that they, they fly from New Zealand uh, so around Japan up to Alaska and then in one go, vroom, they do 7,200 no, 7, miles all the way back across the Pacific uh, in a single flight to New Zealand. Well, that's a hell of a long way. Um, now, sometimes they, they fly quite low over the water, uh, but other times they can be seen um, larking about in the sky in quite great heights and in great numbers. Um, now, let's say imagine they've got about a 6,000 foot corridor. I know they're often quite low over the water, but let's, let's give it a 6,000 foot corridor. I can afford to be generous. Uh, now over 7,200 miles, that's the equivalent, if you scale it down, to a, a one inch high corridor that's 176 yards long. So it's got to navigate down that incredibly narrow um, channel. How does it do this? You see, because if it flew too high, it would go up into space and the air would be too thin and it would die. And if it flew too uh, low, it would crash into the water and die. Um, so let's think of some of the variables. Do you know if if air density were just ever so slightly greater, then it would climb up and go out into space. But if air density were ever so slightly lower, it would crash into the sea. If it flapped ever so slightly harder than it does flap, it would rise up. If not, it would crash into the sea. Um, if its muscles were slightly more efficient, it would rise up. If they were less efficient, it would crash into the sea. If it, the signals from its nerves uh, to the muscles were slightly more efficient, it would uh, or crash into the sea. If its digestive system was slightly more efficient or, or less efficient, if... Can you see? You can just make these figures up, and uh, there are more. You could say, uh, well, it's got to, of course, alter its flight path to follow the curvature of the Earth very precisely. And if it didn't do that, it would out into space or crash into the sea again. Um, can you see that all these factors are in fact related? You know, if the air were denser, it just wouldn't flap as hard, would it? If its muscles were more efficient, it wouldn't have to send such strong signals to them to get the flapping... Are you with me? Um, all these figures that um, Dr. Hugh Ross puts together suggesting that they're just amazing, they're all interrelated. Of course they are. You know, why, 
with the, if gravity were increased, yes, the planets would crash into each other because they found the balance with the strength that gravity is. Um, these arguments may seem compelling, but please, please don't be fooled by them. Good night.